All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of uh, Tech in 10 with Sin. Um, today, I'm going to give you a little overview of Gigabyte's new um, UD4H. It sits right in between the UD5H and UD3H. Uh, the H stands for the, uh, um, the video outputs. The UD stands for ultra durable. Now, you've noticed all boards Gigabyte has released recently, or a majority of the enthusiasts have been UP boards. And the P stands for um, power. So, ultra UP has all Ultra Durable 4 stuff, however, it's also Ultra Durable 5. This is Ultra Durable 4, just like UD5H and the UD3H. Its price point is where the UD4H should be, too. Um, it really isn't that big of a release right now, um, however, I think it has been launched. Um, I only got the board, like, last week, so I've been acquainted with it. It uh, carries an audio codec, for instance, right in between the UD3H and UD5H. Um, it has an ALC-892 instead of an ALC-898 plus amplifiers on the UD5H, which is much better. However, it's ALC-892 is better than the VIA codec on the UD3H. Um, its port, um, its number of ports and stuff is in between the UD5H and UD3H. Its phase count, for instance, is 8 phases, opposed to 6 on the UD3H and 12 on the UD5H. Um, and it has all the OC features, the buttons, the dual bio switch, the postcode display, um, clear CMOS, restart with power, all that stuff, voltage read points. I think this is the one of the only boards, and the UD3H is the cheapest board, that has voltage read points on a board. Um, anyway, so let's take a better look at it. I don't want to make this video too long. So I just went over its basic specs. Um, let me just take a look at the accessories here. Okay, so to begin with, you have four SATA cables. Um, these are the same SATA cables that we always see with Gigabyte products. They're actually pretty good. Um, as you can see on one end, um, it's angled like this, and on the other end, it's straight angled. Um, there are four of them, and two of them are like that. The other two are just straight angled, straight angled. Alright, then we have a SLI bridge, um, back panel I.O. in black and color-coded. And then we have all the uh, manual CD, like a little gigabyte sticker, all the goodies, right? So now let's take a look at the board. All right, the magnificent UD4H. This board has some fame already. It has the memory frequency world record for Z77. Haikuki did that. Um, world record and it was easy with this board for two reasons first of all this is the latest board from Gigabyte with um, T topology um, UD3H and UD5H both have T topology however as that tech as boards release in progression the technology becomes better um, the engineers are better able to route memory um, better um, so as time progresses T topology techniques improve and uh, it has improved. This is the latest board from Gigabyte. For instance, the UD5H T topology was good. The UP5s is a little better. Um, and then you have the HD4 and UD4H, um, which are the latest. And that's how I got the world speed record with Trident X266, which I actually all use, but my CPU can't do over 2900 megahertz. However, we're going to take a look at this board. You have. Um, Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two for the iGPU. Those eight were for CPU, and this one little face here is for um, the VTT slash IMC. Um, it's combined, just like on the UD5H and UD3H. Uh, we can zoom in. Now, these are not the ultra durable. I mean, five parts. However, these are pretty good components. Um, the same MOSFETs as the UD3H. They're better than that of the UD4H or uh, UD5H. Um, however you have less of them and basically this is eight phases compared to UD3H's six. Alright, this PWM right here is uh, not very new, actually it's new, I've never seen it on a Gigabyte board before. Um, let me switch around here a bit. Okay, um, it's a um, it's an IR3563 Alright, let me see if I can zoom and get a good picture of that. Sorry, okay, so it's an IR3564A. Um, the 63A is 8 plus 0, however, the 64A is a 4 plus 1. So basically, um, it has four outputs for the CPU 
and they go get doubled and to eight phases. However, each phase does have its own driver, so we can still call it eight phases, even though it's kind of a little bit of marketing. Um, anyway, so we have clear CMOS, reset switch, we also have a power button here, voltage read points, basically typical of the UD5H and UD3H and really good addition. Then we have two memory uh, phases, same as UD3H and UD5H, um, with this dual driver slash doubler. Here it just uses a dual driver. Um, then we got your 24 pin, and now we go here, and this is a little IR3570. Uh, Alright. This is a 3570, and the 3570 is a um, 3 plus 2 phase. Two of those phases are being routed to the memory, and two, uh, one more is being routed here uh, for the... This is a chill uh, driver, um, and it gets a VTT and IMC. Uh, actually, I'll take the heatsink off now. Give me a second. It already loosened it up. Um, good news, all the heatsinks on this board are screwed down. There are no push pins on this board, which is pretty good for... Um, this type of board. You will notice that the heat sinks are those of the UP series. Um, they're pretty nice actually. Um, and a lot of people like them. So we can take a look at this heat sink too. Um, thermal pad has good contact. Um, basically the same style design. It's actually pretty nice. Good good heavy to it. Like the UD3H doesn't have all its VRMs uh, covered. However, this one does. Okay, so we can see the MOSFETs right here. Uh, I don't think I can zoom better than that. Yeah. Um, they're made by UPA, UPI. I think one is a 4935N and the other one is 21N. Uh, there is an IR63, I mean, 3564A. Anyway, so you have phases of these. Each phase has two MOSFETs, one side, high side, one low side. These are high current MOSFETs used on the UD3H. You just have more of them in more phases here, um, which is right in between the UD5H and UD3H. All right, then we can increase. Um, we have a VLI, um, I think VL800. Uh, this is a four-port controller. provides four of the ports on the back. Look at the UD3H, basically, on the USB. There's your Realtek ALC892. Um, actually, no, here's the LAN. This is a RTE811E. This is the... Um, the in Ethernet, so it's not Intel here, it's Realtek. Then that's the ALC892, uh, and here's the IT8, I think it's 8892E, yeah, that provides a PCI. Um, here you have your dual BIOS, dual 64 megabit. Then you have these PCI switches, and you have a lot of these PCI switches, and you're probably wondering what they're about. Then you have this Marvel controller here. So let's zoom out for a second. All right, so the PCI allotment on this board is as such, okay? The CPU sends, let me focus it here. The CPU sends 16x lanes down here. 8x are hardwired to this first slot. Then these four chips, one, two, three, four. These are NXP PCI 3.0 switches. All right, these four, all right, just these four. These four will take, they each contain two lanes. So they take 8x from here and switch it down here. So you can do two-way or just single. Then you have that last 4x here. That goes directly to the PCH. However, those lanes from the PCH are 2.0, and that's why we have two 2.0 switches here. Now, I think one of them is routed here, and then two more lanes, and it just actually it takes two lanes. So these two uh, switches can each handle two lanes, and so it can take all the PCIe for here, here, and here, and switch it to this 4x lane here. Um, so it, it does share with these uh, lanes. Anyway, so you have this one extra PCIe 3.0 switch up here, because there's five of them. These are, this is a 3.0 switch. And what do you know? Then you have that Marvel controller, and then you have something in the manual where it says you can either you can have eSATA, two eSATA 6 gigabytes per second, or two internal 6 gigabytes per second ports extra. Now, this is what I'm going to call, like, um, it's kind of like a flexible um, connectivity. And uh, so basically, the Marvel has outputs. The outputs go to this two-lane switch, which can switch at 6 gigabytes per second, or way above that, actually, um, because it is a PCI 3.0 switch, not a SATS 3 gigabytes per second switch. Now, this can switch both lanes to the back, or it can switch both lanes down here internally. So you have full-speed lanes going through that Marvel, and a lot of people will either use internal or external eSATA. And... Um, so just be aware that it's sharing those lanes, and that's pretty cool, because if you don't use the eSATA, why do you have to pay for extra Marvel controller if you're not going to use both of them, right? So that's what Gigabyte was thinking, kind of trying to lower the cost on you and the board itself. Um, so here's a bi dual BIOS switch. We'll move on to other features. Um, this can switch between main and backup BIOS. There's actually a nice little arrow that goes all the way from here 
and it points down to here. Um, anyway, so the LEDs on the BIOS to say which one you're selected. Um, here's your ITE um, IT8728F disk control super IO um, PCH here. Uh, then you have postcode here, which is direction. So if you're benching it like this, then the person can be over here, which is great. That's what I like. Um, and this um, this board is meant to do some heavy benching. Um, then you have a little PCIe extra slot and power for the PCIe power here. Also provides extra 3.3 point. So this should be a really good uh, single card or dual card benching board. Um, here you do have a USB internal header but only one. Um, so that basically goes over a lot of the uh, parts of the board. Um, this is actually a pretty good board for its price and it should make everyone happy especially if you're an overclocker. I think one thing I haven't shown is actually the back panel. I can show that now. Alright, so back panel, you have PS slash 2 from ITE A728F. These two USB 3.0 and these two USB 3.0 are off a VLI 800 um, 1 to 4 port controller. So it takes one PCI lanes and makes a 4 USB 3.0. These two eSATAs are shared internally with uh, these two gray ports here. So you can either use this or you can use that. I'm pretty sure if you use one here, then that's going to disable both back ones. Um, anyway, so then you have two USB 2 here. These are from Intel. That's why it says plug USB here. Um, so you have total control over these two ports even without drivers installed. Then you have your real, um, Realtek Gigabit Ethernet. And you have 7.1 audio with SPDIF out optical here. And then you have a D-Sub or some people call it VGA, DVI, HDMI here. And then display port here. Alright, so that goes over the board. Um, a lot of things have been done. So this is basically like a beefed up UD3H. Um, and it has carries a little bit of components, um, more heat sinks, more phases, um, same durability and better memory overclocking probably than any other gigabyte board. Maybe the HD4 is a little better. But um, the UD4H probably has the best memory overclocking there is uh, as of this moment. Um, anyways, so thank you for watching. Uh, the back of the board is also pretty good. Um, you can tell a lot. I think it's a six layer PCB. Alright, anyways, thank you for watching, and this is another edition of uh, Sin Hardware Tech in 10. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.